Life is good. I'm trying this green screen, so don't make fun of me. <laughs> Today I got um, what? Can y'all even see? A little black hole action. We're going through the singularity with this one. I don't know why it's doing all this. Maybe it's my shadow. I need to get this. Um, the light a little bit better. Today we're doing a review. Cagebird Sings, Maya Angelou. If you don't know, now you know. Uh, I try to read this once a year. I just finished my reading for this year, you know, right at the end of Black History Month. So I figured I would share with you my thoughts. Um, obviously, it's a beautiful book and it's a classic. I mean, if you don't have a copy, you should grab one. And part of why I think it's incredibly important in this day and age is because, well, the subtitle, or not the subtitle, but the subtext is, well, it says, I know why the caged bird sings, obviously. And then it says the moving and beautiful autobiography of a talented black woman. And if you just look at the title and the cover, you might think, okay, this is, you know, it's an autobiography. It's a story about her life as she grew up and yada, yada. And it is that. But ultimately, this is a testimony. That's the way I characterize it. This is a testimony of the human condition, of the depths of the human spirit, of resilience and and capacity to overcome. And, you know, you could talk about the common tropes of racism and sexism, and those are there, right? I mean, you have some graphic depictions too from things like um her being raped as a little girl to 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 instances of her trying to recapture or re-explore her sexuality despite not being conventionally beautiful as her mother was and it's um there's a lot i'm trying to find something that i might have highlighted just to give you a quote from it because any quote you can take is all beautiful just the way she uses language oh so i just circled this i don't know why but it says all those under the sound of my voice who have no spiritual home, whose hearts are burdened and heavy laden, let them come. This is from a chapter where they were talking. I think this is in um, they're in the church and the reverend was doing his thing. But in that scene, you you kind of got a sense of the grandiosity amidst the humbleness of that setting, if that makes sense. This was, I mean, she, she published this in 1969. This was based obviously in her childhood. So I think she was around 40 at the time. So this is probably in, you know, 30s or so in Arkansas, so deep south. And just the tropes and the understanding of how things were at that point, getting us peak into the eyes of somebody who lived that it just gives you this sense of it's almost like time travel but also telepathy like i get to to experience and not fully obviously i'll never know what it is like to be a black woman in the south in the 1930s but the more we practice it empathy i mean i think the better we become at parsing the stories we see and the narratives we see in the news and in media and we can begin to understand that some of these things are um, are a lot simpler than we want them to believe the angry black woman or the the sassy whatever or the this or the that i think all of these come from places that are less than helpful and when we begin to dig underneath the surface for what these things really point towards I re this background is really annoying me hold on one second I, I apologize actually let me choose a different background and see if there's something that's more appropriate um uh, oh i feel like this makes sense so let me not take too much longer to be fair i know why the cage bird sings this is not a review this is more a relationship that i have with the book and um why i think that you should take up reading it as well um i mean i could read the wikipedia for you if you want like a breakdown real quick um uh, yeah 1969 autobiography 1969 that's the year that we went to the moon 
describing the young and early years of American writer and poet Maya Angelou to coming of age story that illustrates strength of character, overcoming racism and trauma, um, having an inferiority complex. I, I found it interesting that she actually wrote this after being challenged by James Baldwin, because he is somebody that I plan on reading a lot this year as well. Um, it's characterized as autobiographical fiction because she, you know, uses poetry and language and literature to bring in this story. And um, yeah, it's it, it it was nominated for a National Book Award in 1970. It's classic. It's, you know, you know what it is. But, you know, philosophically, we're talking about huge ideas, we're talking about freedom and, and limitations. We're talking about the impact of social constructs, like what does it mean to have to exist under this oppressive regime that just feels normal? Like you don't even have the words to decipher how it is wrong or why it's wrong, but you know it is for some reason, but it still perpetuates. And I feel like these are things we still wrestle with today. Um, they've just become so much more refined and less abrasive and less apparent that people can't see them. Well, some people can't see them. The real ones usually can. Um, yeah, I mean, these are all huge themes. And I think that sometimes we forget them. So this book for me was an exercise in memory. Um, remembering our collective consciousness, our collective spirit. I think there's, um, you know, another theme that's in this book is about how it's usually incumbent on the oppressed to speak to that oppression. It's almost like even in the midst of everything going on, like there was a scene where the kids were graduating and it was just this big build up to this huge day. And then I don't want to ruin it, but effectively something happens and the entire situation was just, it's like, pin in the balloon, air went out. Um, but the way that they recovered from that just tells you a little bit about the well of resilience and um, anti-fragility, as, as Talib would say. That is in the, the Black American experience. So, yeah, I'm African, so I, I don't necessarily claim being Black American, but at the same time, I know that our stories are tightly intertwined and to understand the talented black woman that is Maya Angelou a little bit more, I felt like would just help give me space to move on this plane. So once again, my name is Zen. Thank you for joining me on this today's edition. We did a little book review slash, I don't know, summary, not really, but I don't know what it is. Tomorrow I'll come up with something else random and we'll talk again. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do the green screen tomorrow. It's kind of, it's a little janky, so, but. Love. Stay well. And we are out. Yes, we are. See the liars stick together while the honest see the K. Hallelujah to the Lord who formed a menace out of clay. We are all a bunch of hypocrites. The dream is not a picket fence. I download the command and then I execute with militants. A sort of fun fella. Spread the truth and go and tell a friend or relative dweller that the boy is in a stellar man. Talk it like I'm Keller, man. Walk inside the cellar, fam. Keep my thoughts at bay before I'm wet up like the weather, man. Need my space like Milky Way. Bow your head and let us pray. Stressing the professor when I mess up, I don't hesitate. Keep the pockets cheddar weight. Bind the feet with sellotape. Close my eyes and leave the skies. It's never mind and meditate. Lighter than a featherweight. Spirit straight to heaven's gate. Peek into the future, about to find a way to levitate. Wait.